Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepizani. Here are your top stories this Wednesday. In Zimbabwe, a 77-year-old man has been jailed for 12 years after beating his drinking partner to death with a heavy log. The deceased, Makina Mtaipi, was challenged to a drinking contest but apparently drank too much, too fast, which led to an argument between the six villagers sharing a traditional brew from a port in Jambezi Matabeleland. Mutaipi and the accused, Michael Simasiku, were pulled apart by other villagers, but the row was still simmering between them when they both left the homestead where they were drinking shortly after 5 p.m. on May 25th last year. Bulawayo High Court heard that Mutali, at about 7 p.m. on the same day, proceeded to Mutaipi's home nearby and found him resting by the veranda. Armed with a log, Mtali beat Mtaipi until he was found unconscious. Mtali died within minutes of the brutal attack. Mtaipi pleaded not guilty to the murder, but was convicted with constructive intent and jailed for 12 years in prison by Justice Lawrence Kamocha. In Zambia, the Chingola district of the Copper Belt has run out of milly mill and residents are fighting to buy the last bags of the staple food from one national mailing shop which still has stock. Outlets, including ShopRite checkers, have run out of maize mill. According to Zambia reports, the shortage of milly mill in the Copper Belt province will mean a price rise of the commodity within 48 hours. The last time people had to queue for maize mill was 20 years ago during the rule of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. Before 2011, a bag of breakfast mill was sold for 40,000 kwacha per 25 kg, but now priced over 80,000 kwacha in areas like Chingola. In other Zambian news, health practi practitioners in charge of the Ngombe and Matero Chinguere health centers disclose that there's a serious shortage of staff. The following report comes from Movi TV. Problems surrounding Zambia's health sector have continued to be outlined, leaving patients with little hope for improvement. Among the challenges cited include lack of vital equipment such as x-rays in most public health centers, a situation which has left patients with no option but to pay for the services to those that privately own the equipment. The other concern is on the persistent shortage of health personnel to attend to the patients. <laughs> And some medical personnel manning Ngombe and Machero Chinguere Clinic said unless the problem of shortage of staff is addressed, misunderstandings between medical staff and patients will always arise. And uh, the staff that are there, sometimes we have one clinic officer and maybe sometimes two clinic officers and two nurses. And when you look at the patients that are at the outpatients, on average we have 300 to 400 patients per day. And speaking during an impromptu visit to selected health centers in Lusaka, District Health Office Senior Nursing Officer Happy Chupulu and Lusaka District Commissioner Ashwa Kampengele urged health practitioners to remain committed to their duties. There are some people who are frustrating the government of the day, then I think we need to flush them out so that we see what we can do for the people in the people. Okay. And I'm appealing to you, work extra hard. Concerns about lack of certain equipment in hospitals have been raised, while government has expressed confidence that it will soon address the problem. Some of them are referred to the institutions where there is an X-ray, and some institutions have private uh, uh, X-rays. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Bad Health Deputy Minister Christopher Mlenga says government is doing everything possible to mitigate the critical shortage of staff. I can assure you that we have uh, procured uh, a number of equipment, including X-rays and the uh, ICU. No, we, we have procured uh, the, the equipment. Some part of the equipment is already in and part is on order. Uh, part on is on, a, on, a, uh, uh, on, on its way uh, coming to the country. He adds that many equipment needed in hospitals have already been purchased and will soon be distributed.
Grace McConnell Lubinda, Movi TV News in Lusaka. The anti magistrate court in Malawi has convicted a 17-year-old boy of trying to commit suicide. Peter Famous Baluti tried to hang himself in his bedroom following an argument with his mother on November 5, 2012. A police statement said Baluti picked a quarrel with his mother, Agnes Baluti, after he was accused of stealing 5,000 kwacha, which he used to go partying. When his mother tried to reason with him, Baluti hit her on the, with a chair and hung himself in his room. He was found in his room hanging from a roof, but his mother and neighbors managed to bring him down and resuscitated him with some water and later took him to the police. Baluti pleaded guilty to the offense of attempted suicide and was convicted under Section 229 of the Panel Code. In entertainment news, early next year, the first ever Zambian Music Awards will be held. One of the artists hoping to be recognized is singer Ariel, who joins me now on the line. So Ariel, we spoke to you a while back. What have you been up to since then? Uh, I've been recording a few, a few songs, and uh, I've done a couple of collaborations here, as well as writing songs for some, some Nigerian artists here. So these are the first Zambian Awards in February. Could you tell us a bit about them? Uh, the the line is now open for for people to nominate artists in various categories, and uh, I'm one of the people vying uh, in uh, the best male contemporary artist, best male gospel artist, and uh, song of the year. So people can vote by going to ZambianMusicAwards.com and uh, selecting my name against the stated category. And Ariel, does this show the strength of Zambian music at the moment? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, this, I think this will turn out to be the biggest awards in Zambia over time because uh, Mosi is the one sponsoring them and there's a lot of corporate support. Okay, so Ariel, what would it mean for you to win? Uh, it would be great. It would be great that uh, people actually acknowledging my contribution to Zambian music industry. And finally, could I ask you, what does 2013 hold for Ariel? Uh, a lot more, a lot more. There's going to be, I've got a lot of surprises for you guys. <laughs> There's a big collaboration coming up with an artist from Southern Africa. Yeah, I won't spill the beans yet, yeah. But you have to watch the space early, early 2013. Then as well, the song I did with Abel Chungu is going to come out around that period and a couple of videos as well. So it's an action-packed 2013 ahead. Thank you for speaking to us today and good luck with the awards. All right, thanks a lot. Now it's time for a special feature from Liam and today he's talking about a new lifestyle magazine that has been set up in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Thanks Charity. Well today we're talking about Deck Magazine. Now Deck Magazine is a relatively new online lifestyle magazine that has been launched in Zimbabwe this year. Now it's run by five Bulawayo based youths who began working on Horizon Magazine but have now branched off into the newly established Deck Magazine. But what's it all about? They say they're a magazine aimed at the urban trendsetter, a young and emerging individual with diverse interests and tastes. What's really interesting is that the DEC crew feel that young people they want to communicate with have lacked such a platform like this before. So whether it's fashion, gossip, gadgets or entertainment, these guys have got it covered. As we've discussed before on ATV, social media is a great way of promoting communications between young people and DEC are acutely aware of this with a large presence on both Twitter and Facebook. Now if you want to get involved with the magazine, you can follow them in a number of ways. You can hit them up on Twitter, at Deck Magazine, or what about getting in touch on Facebook, facebook.com slash Deck Mag. Or if you're not on either of those things, you can simply go to their website, www.deck-magazine.com. Well, to tell us a little bit more about this is Gilmore T. Moyo, one of the founders of Deck Magazine, who is joining us from Bulawayo. Thanks for joining us, Gilmore. Now, in your own words, could you tell us a bit about the magazine and where it all began? 
basically deck magazine started off i mean team deck is the team that's behind the magazine they we started off in december last year so we started off with a project with a local um restaurant or lounge that is called horizon and then we started off uh, by producing their in-house publication as team deck and then we went on for about four months with them and then from there we said you know what we're gonna start our own thing and then we went we went on boom to start deck magazine which is an online magazine at the moment but we're hoping to go on print uh, maybe December we might do something, so but it's not yet confirmed. But then we're also going to be going on print from next year. So, Deck basically is all, is an urban lifestyle magazine. It's just aimed to, to for those that for the trendy individuals. So for anybody who's a trendsetter, Deck is for them. You talked about young people. What, what is your target age range? Our our target age range basically is 18 years old to 35 years old. Because we believe these are the people that are the ones that are making things happen in society. So we want them to basically not be scared to stand up for what they believe in and what they think should be adapted within their societies. Hence, deck is there for them. And what we're also trying to offer is a platform for these young people to write down things or to send articles to us on things that they think are the trend setting or things that can help improve their societies and create. Um, I would say maybe a change that they want to see. So we're more of the 18 to 35 and because we think these are the leaders of today and they can just make things happen instantly. When you set up this magazine, did you feel there was a gap in the market? Is this something that Zimbabweans haven't really had before? Definitely, I think there was a gap in the market in Zimbabwe because in many cases, you, you find that the part of deck, team deck, the guys that are behind the project, we are young people that are basically exposed to the outside world of Zimbabwe. Some, it might be South Africa, it might be the UK, it might be Europe or America, but we've got a bit of exposure. So what I f we felt when we came together was that, you know, in many cases we go outside the country, we go to Europe and we see amazing things that are happening in there, but we don't bring them back home and we do them back home. So that was like a slot that was not there. You find that young people actually have to go all the way on, uh, so I mean, social networks or in, on websites that are from um, outside their countries to find information on things that they need to know. So we thought since we have the exposure, why not set up a magazine in Zimbabwe that offers young people an opportunity to say, you know what, I want to know about the MTV's click. There we go, DEC. And then you think, oh, DEC is writing about the VMA where Kim Kardashian almost tripped on stage. You know, things like yeah, that. Yeah. So there was a market. There's other magazines that are there in Zimbabwe, but I feel that they're not really... Many of them either are doing stuff for Zimbabwe or they're doing advocacy things, but we wanted to cover the lifestyle, lifestyle that many young Zimbabweans are adapting to. You know, we watch TVs, we all are influenced by so many stuff, but we wanted that platform that says, you know what, we're from Zimbabwe and we're giving you the world perspective from young Zimbabweans. I was just saying to the viewers, at ATV, we're very big on social media. How much of an important role does that play in what you guys do? For us, I think it is actually worked amazingly because when we started off we set up a Facebook uh, page you find that many young people are on Facebook so the only way that we created awareness of our website was through Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and um, ISSU you know because that is something that is effective on, every, on in, in many young people's lives in Zimbabwe everyone is on their phones so why not just give them already provide you know, give them in their face because it's something that they always do, Facebooking, tweeting. So why not just say, you know what, the magazine is also available on Facebook. So things like Facebook and Twitter have played a huge role in uh, in the growth of DEC. You find that with actually an audience from outside Zimbabwe, from outside Africa, that actually follows us and they can relate to what we are doing. And there's nothing just gratifying than to receive an email from someone that's in Slovakia and saying, you know what, I read an article about um, the European trend setting fashion or the MTV awards or something that you wrote on sport. And then it's amazing and you're thinking, oh my word, I'm from Zim, from this hot country. But then somebody in Slovakia is writing to me saying, you know what, you guys are doing a good job. So social, social media has played a huge role in reaching out to many people. Thanks very much for joining us, Gilmore. We wish you the best of luck with the magazine. Thank you so much. And Michael Mambo joins us now to discuss the day's sports news.
Good evening, I'm Michael Mambo with your sports news for today. In Zimbabwe, the National Sports Stadium, which has been selected as the venue for Mbada Diamonds Cup final, is unavailable until next year. The 60,000 stadium is undergoing urgent drainage renovations to prevent water logging during the rainy season. The Mbada Diamonds Cup final will see champions Dynamos take on Monomtapa and, now, and will now be played at another venue. It is thought that the venue will be Rufaro Stadium, which has half the capacity. Earlier in the week, we discussed the champions' dynamos, but what about the other side of the table? Former champions' gunners were relegated to Division 1 on goal difference, despite being beating chicken in on the final day. Moses Chunga's men finished 18th with 34 points, the same number as Blake Mamba's, but with a worse goal difference. Gunners will be joined by Quillaton, Hardbody, Blue Rangers in Division 1 for the next season. Taking their place in the Premier League will be Triple B, Black Rhinos and Triangle. In the final place is being contested by Bantu Rovers, How Mine and ZBC, ZPC Wange. The top story in the world of football today is the surprising sacking of Chelsea coach Roberto Di Matteo despite him winning the Champions League last season. Here to join me in this discussion is my fellow colleague, Liam. Ada. Now, Liam, what are your thoughts on the sacking of Roberto Di Matteo? Well, Mike, I think this is something that will shock the world of football. Nobody could have expected him to be sacked after the fantastic season he had last season, or half season, should I say. He won the Champions League, the FA Cup. He did everything that could have possibly been expected of him. And yes, they've been on a poor run of form in the last sort of two weeks. But I mean, I remember me and you talking a couple of weeks ago about how they were top of the table, they were playing the best football. They've had a bit of a blip. And yes, they, they possibly could be out of the Champions League now, but I think everyone in world football would have expected Di Matteo to get at least one full season before he was sacked. So it's, I think it's very unfair. Yeah, it may be very unfair, but considering Roman Abramovich's record with managers, does this still surprise you? Not really, no. I, I think Di Matteo himself has probably been thinking ever since he got the job, because as you remember, he took over from Andre Villas Boas. He'd probably been thinking, I'm on limited time here. You know, Abramovich has got such a bad record of, I think this is his ninth manager since he took over. He gets very impatient. I mean, everyone always said that the thing he wanted was the Champions League, and he won it. What more can you ask for? But it just takes a few bad games and you're out. So your thoughts on the next Chelsea manager? Well, there's been a few names thrown around in the press today. The first, which was surprising to me, was former Liverpool boss Rafael Benitez. Now, he had a very poor run of form at Liverpool and even worse at Inter Milan. So it seems odd and it again seems unfair to Di Matteo that he would take over. But I think the big name that all Chelsea fans and Abramovich want to see is the uh, former Barcelona coach Pep Guardiola, who, as everybody knows, he, he was the manager that created the best team that this generation certainly has ever seen. He's on a sabbatical at the moment, but there are rumours that he wants to get back into football. But, as we were discussing before the show, would you really want to go to Chelsea where, as it's been proven time and time again, you have a short shelf life? Oh, OK. So, who, which manager in your eyes do you think would want to come to a job where they know if they have a bad run of form, which will ultimately happen, no matter uh, which team you play for or you coach, who do you think would want to take that position? And why do you think these managers keep on coming back to Chelsea all the time? Well, not to be too blunt about it, but I, I think they're probably quite well paid, so that, that can entice them in. But, you know, it's a top club and you get to work with brilliant players and, and ultimately there's a great budget to spend. You know, this season they bought, they bought Eden Hazard, they bought several other players. But at the end of the day, you can't relax in this, in this world of football. Only a manager like Sir Alex Ferguson can undergo really sort of really period of poor form and be safe in his job, but he's earned that right. So I don't know what manager would possibly want to take over here. I think it needs to be a big personality. Guardiola's got that. He's also a great manager. I think he's the only other man would be Mourinho, but let's be honest, he's not going to go back to work for Abramovich anytime soon. Yeah. Oh, one last question. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you think about, uh, you say that every, the next manager who comes in, they always look forward to having a big budget and uh, obviously their salary is high, but considering the UEFA financial fair play rules that are coming in, 
who would want to take that risk? Well, that's a good point. But if you think about it, Chelsea have already got this squad. And we talk every week about Mata, Hazard, Oscar, Torres, although he's been on poor form recently. So even if they can't spend more money in the future, they've got arguably the best squad in the Premiership. Maybe Manchester City would have something to say about that. So to, to get the chance to come and work with these fantastic players and get the best out of them, that's a real appeal to a manager. But as I say, the responsibility is so high that you could, you could lose two games on the bounce and suddenly the people are talking about losing your job, which is, which is ridiculous. But that's the reality that any Chelsea fan knows that a manager's going to face. And thank you, Liam. Oh, we'll hear from you guys and tell us what you think who the next coach of Chelsea will be. Your thoughts on the sacking of Di Matteo. Good night. It's picture of the daytime and we have a special collage today. Shepard Chihuahua sent in so many pictures that we thought we'd just show them all. Can you follow Shepard's lead and send us your special pictures and you could appear on the big screen. Thank you for watching ATV News and join us tomorrow at the same time. Good evening. <laughs>